In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can perform logistic regression using Microsoft Excel. To begin, go to the Real Statistics website and download the Real Statistics Resource Pack. Then also go to the Kaggle website and download the training data set for the Titanic competition. Next, I'm going to install the Real Statistics Resource Pack. and open the data set downloaded from Kaggle. Now the Real Statistics Resource Pack requires that you put the variable you want to predict on the right side. And in this case we want to know who survived and who died. So we move that variable, we can call that our dependent variable or our target variable, to column L all the way on the right. Also, we, the Real Statistics Resource Pack, the algorithm does not automatically recode variables, so we have to do that manually. And I'm going to remove several columns just to keep it simpler and just re recode the sex variable. So I'm going to change this variable so that if it's male, we'll make it a 0, otherwise we'll make it a 1. And if you wanted, you could do that for some of the other variables, such as the embarked, I think, variable that tells which port the passenger embarked from. But for now, I'll just do sex, call it sex recoded, and copy, and then paste as values. So now, instead of a formula here, I have values, because I copied and pasted as values. So now I can delete the original column, and I have a new column that just says 0 or 1, 0 for male, 1 for female. Now, I also noticed that there are some missing values for age. That's not good because if I just use the data as is, it would tr I think these would be treated as zeros. So I'm going to put the mean value in the cases where it's blank. If I was going to be doing this really properly, I would also probably create a dummy variable that would be called age missing. That would be a one if the, the value is missing and a zero if it's not, so that if there's a difference, if there's anything unusual or any informational value in the missing values, then I could include that also in the logistic regression model. But just to keep it simpler for now, I'll note the average is 29.7, so I'm going to put that in for all the blanks. Okay, so now I have a data set with only numeric values as my independent and dependent variables. So I'm ready to run the logistic regression. I click Add-ins, Real Statistics, Data Analysis Tools, and select Logistic Regression. Then I click this button to select the range of values, and then Fill. Notice I didn't select column A because that's just telling me what row number I'm on currently. It's not valuable, so I leave it out. I also click New here because I want the results of the regression to go on a new tab. Another field that's important is the classification cutoff. So to understand this, you need to realize that logistic regression is predicting a probability that survived will be 1 here. And so what I'm saying is the classification cutoff is if the probability is above that cutoff, I'll treat that as though it's a survived. And if it's below 0 0.5, I'll treat that as though it's a non-survived or death. If I raise the cutoff, that would mean you need a probability of, say, for example, 0 0.6 to be considered a, a, a survival. So now I click OK. And I get the following output. These variables are simply my independent variables. And so they're just co basically copies of these columns up from over here. However, it should be noted that if there are two or more rows, 
that have the same values for all of these variables, they're grouped together. So for example, any of these rows that have a two over here, this is actually two passengers combined into one row. So it kind of rolls them up. Next, look at column G, H, and I. This is telling me, was the value of survived one or zero? If it's a one, then we put a, then we count it as a success. If it's a zero, it's counted as a failure. And then this is just com combining the two. Now the most important column here is probably column K because that actually shows me the predicted probability that the logistic regression is putting for this particular passenger or group of passengers with, based on the independent variables. So what we can do here is basically say we believe that based on the data, the logistic regression is giving us a probability of 0.717934. In this case, the passenger actually did survive, and since our cutoff is 0.5, we're above the cutoff, so we consider this a correct prediction. Now, in, the, in this row, for example, we have a probability above 0.5, so we consider that we're predicting a survival because we're above our cutoff. However, the passenger actually died, so this is an incorrect prediction. Okay, so moving on, we have the following classification table. This shows us, of the passengers who actually survived, how many did we predict would survive? How many did we predict would die? So 243 of the survivors were predicted as surviving, and 99 of the survivors were predicted as dying. Of those who died, 85 were predicted as surviving, and 464 were predicted as actually dying. So if we change the cutoff, these values will shift. If we, for example, made the cutoff 1, then we'd be predicting nobody survives, right? And so how many of the survivors, we predicted none of them to survive, right? We basically just say everybody dies, right? And if, similarly, if you put it at zero, we predict everybody lives. So 0.5 is in between, and so we see the, the change, and, and you also see the accuracy for predicting the survivals and the deaths.